still the purification is the biggest problem, the purification. Once, if you don't have purified, if you have no good purification, as Montagnier said, if you have no good, you got to have purification to be able to characterize the virus. Even if, we, if one assumes that Montagnier and Gallo and the particles are retroviral particles, the reverse transcriptase is uh, specific to retroviruses. To say that you have a unique retrovirus, you must characterize, you must, its proteins and its RNA. You must show that these have proteins and RNA which is not present in other retroviruses. And why in your mind is there such uh, inconsistencies in identifying the virus among the experts? Uh, the particles? Yes. I don't know. We cannot say that you have a new retrovirus unless you show that it has unique, partic unique proteins and unique RNA. And to show that, you must purify the virus. There is no other way. If you say that these proteins and this RNA are HIV RNA and HIV protein, you must somehow obtain them from the virus particles. But because the viral particles are so small, the next best thing is to obtain them from a mass of material which contain nothing else but retrovirus particles. Well, when I talked to Flossie Wongstall, she said that you don't necessarily have to take pictures. You can go to the culture and look for viruses budding as evidence of release of virus. Yes, as I said to you, budding and retrovirus-like particles, just seeing them in the culture, there is no proof that they are retrovirus. That is no evidence. Take pictures from the culture, it's no proof that they are virus. And certainly you cannot prove just looking at that. Uh, there are so many things there in the culture which also contain proteins, which also contain RNA and contain DNA. To say that HIV has nine proteins and HIV has a genome, a unique genome, nine uh, genes, you must take, you must have evidence that these proteins originated from the viral particles. And to do that, you must take these particles out from the culture. You got to have them out. You, you must purify them. You must obtain them separate from everything else which contains proteins. She said that there were problems that when you spin the particles under the high-speed centrifuge, yes. that they often distort or they lose their envelope or they break apart. And that's why it's, it's almost impossible to purify viruses. No, there are many, many pictures of uh, electromicrographs of retroviruses which have been purified. You know, I can show you, including this one, a root sarcoma virus. When you take somebody to, to court for a paternity suit, mm -hmm. you must have evidence that the blood originated from the father and from the child. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. You must have proved that they originated from the father and from the child to compare the DNA. The same way, if you want to say that these proteins are from HIV, you must have them coming from HIV. But the particles are too small, so the best next thing is to purify viruses. And this is not me who says it. I mean, this is all the travelogists, including uh, Montagnier, including Charmaine, including Barres That is, you know, this is so simple. So you must have purification. That is the only way. You see, this is what the HIV. Retroviruses have a matter of 100 to 120 nanometers. They have a cone-shaped core. They have the lateral bodies, and they have knobs. What are the knobs? When we see uh, HIV being diagrammatically represented, you see there, there are some spikes coming out from the particle. And these knobs are extremely important for effectivity. Again, according to all the HIV experts, 
if you have the knobs are crucial they are essential for infection no knobs no infection and there is no infection the particles cannot be viruses so a complex process of an interaction of the outer protein of the virus called the envelope with molecules on the surface of the cell are essential for a virus to enter the cell and when we speak of entry we essentially mean the guts or the internal component of the virus that contains its genetic information in the form of RNA and certain other proteins. Today, nobody has proven the existence of knobs in the cell-free particles. Obviously, when we first uh, uh, we're working on the cause of, of AIDS. We had to be very broadly uh, have our ability to include a whole variety of different potential organs, organisms that could cause it. What was helpful um, in the in the limiting of, of our search uh, were the cases in hemophiliacs where the material that's used to treat hemophilia comes from blood of of, uh, or plasma, a subcomponent of blood that is sold or donated into the system and then a purification process is, is used to take that large volume of plasma and, and specifically pull out the anti-hemophiliac uh, factors that actually can treat the hemophiliacs. Now in that process, the, the, the one thing you want to, uh, you have to realize is that material is given intravenously to uh, the hemophiliacs to treat them and you have to have it very clean. You don't want to have any infectious agents in that if you can avoid it. And one of the easiest ways to do any of uh, preparation of a drug is to filter it. Now we have these wonderful modern filters where you can work on your your drug and then the last, the last step before you put it in the bottle, pass it through a filter that filters out all infectious agents. Now I say all, uh, meaning that the filter can only filter out those that the filter can catch, which is the bigger agent, that bacteria um, and parasites are much bigger than viruses. And those filters indeed will filter out all the bacteria and make it, quote, sterile, that is, you cannot grow bacteria from it. Uh, so, but yet we knew that after this process that they were still getting this disease, um, which could have been caused by a virus, a bacteria, or parasitic disease, or whatever. But since all of the larger bacteria and parasites are eliminated in these filters, then you can assume that the disease uh, that you're looking at is caused by a virus. And does it also filter out the infected cells? So is it just pure, free-floating HIV virus? The, the factor eight material is cell-free, so it's a, the only liquid material. And that, that liquid material would can, could contain many infectious agents from the donors of all these. Literally, there's hundreds of, of donors in each of these batches. Um, and when you filter it out, you filter out all the bigger organisms, that is, bacteria and parasites, you're only left with viruses that go through the filter. I reckoned that a virus that would survive the purification of clotting factors from human blood uh, was more likely to be a virus without a cell membrane, a small virus like a parvovirus, and uh, I would not have put a retrovirus at the top of the list. And yet, when HIV was discovered, uh, it was indeed a retrovirus. I think my scientific reasoning was perfectly correct, um, but uh, uh, I was deluding myself nonetheless. Is there something harsh about the factor process? Could... Well, I didn't realize how unharsh uh, the purification of clotting factors is. We were talking about purification. Those clotting factors are anything but pure and they were tainted with this virus. They were tainted with hepatitis B virus, with hepatitis C virus, which also was not discovered until long after HIV was discovered. So uh, HIV was just one of several viruses that was passed in clotting factors. Now here it is a paper which was published by several authors, uh, which uh, uh, with a co-author Geldenblum, and they say they have found that on the average, after immediately after release, 
after the knobs are released, the particles into the fluid, there are 0.5 knobs per particle. In the set, even these 0.5 knobs, they may be false positive. That is, there are no knobs at all. The knobs here look like little knobs everywhere. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. There's a chance that you have some dirt, of course, in the cell culture. And these would be knobs from a particle that is cut tangentially. Here's the same. That's my interpretation. So my interpretation. But here are the knobs. Here might be some, there might be some dirt here, sure, that is dirt from preparation. Mm -hmm. But aren't, don't these look like knobs too, coming off of this big one? Yeah, you know, they are glycoproteins also on the cell. Okay. Yeah. Now, we have to differentiate between them. If we would like to go for differentiation, we have to use immuno-electron microscopy to make a tag. It's either the glycoprotein or it's something different. <clears throat> in, in a paper published in, in 2003, the author state, the cost of GP180, that is the knobs, do not form spikes on the surface of heave as is commonly described in the literature. We suggest the spike snob observed by negative staining electron microscopy may be an artifact of the penetration of heavy metal stains between the envelope proteins. What exactly does that mean? That means that well, despite some people's claims that there are knobs on the HIV particles, these authors say that the particles have no knobs, in plain language. This is a paper published 2006 in Nature. Here it is CIV, semen immunodeficiency virus. And in these particles, you can see many knobs. But when you come to the electron micrograph on, of what is meant to be HIV particles, there are hardly any knobs. In fact, we can see only one there, but you can see the same thing down there. And you don't know if there are knobs or there is some artifact there. In fact, the authors call them putative. Putative knobs. Or putative means supposed, supposedly HIV knobs. Mm -hmm. So the authors do not have, even today, proof that the HIV particles have knobs which are crucial for infection. Even if we admit, you know, even if we accept that there are knobs, there are 0.5 knobs immediately per particle on the average, immediately after they are released, they are lost. Even this small number is lost very rapidly, according to Gildenblum. And these knobs being lost so rapidly, and H and factor VIII preparation taking a long time from the time it is the blood is taken to the time factor VIII is prepared is a long time. And even after it is prepared, it may stay on the bench for months before it is used. So it is impossible for hemophiliacs, the, the factor VIII, to contain an infectious HIV particle even if HIV exists.